Next up, uh, we ha had uh, Neely uh, Crows on the agenda. Unfortunately, due to the fog, uh, both her flights uh, that we tried to book last night were cancelled. But fortunately, we have the remarkable Jenny Tennyson, who is our Deputy Chief Executive Officer and Technical Director, who will be presenting uh, Neely's speech on her behalf. So, Jenny. Thank you. So just pretend I'm Neely, OK? <laughs> I'm delighted to learn in preparing for this summit today that I am a member of Generation Open. It is a title which I fully embrace. Generation Open is a classification that goes beyond age. It is a way of thinking, living and working. It is about a way of seeing the world and the possibilities within it. It is about sharing and joining. So it doesn't matter if you are someone who remembers the pre-computer age or the pre-internet era, which for some of you might sound like the prehistoric age, and rightly so, because digitization has changed our lives profoundly. In the last 20 years, more innovative changes have happened in our lives than in the last 2,000 years. During my work at the European Commission, responsible for the digital agenda, I spent many years helping people to think like a member of Generation Open, to help them see the enormous potential of working in an open way with data, education and innovations throughout the economy and society. And in that time, I got to meet many proud members of Generation Open all across Europe, people of all ages. What these people had in common was a passion for experimenting with what new technologies can offer us and a willingness to share that passion with others. Perhaps this is one definition of this generation. Or perhaps we should not call them a generation, but a coalition, a coalition of all generations who believe in sharing and joining information. And although promoting open thinking within a digital Europe is no longer my official job, it remains a very important cause for me. At this moment, I am the special envoy for startups and scale-ups in the Netherlands. Governments can play a key role in this. We all know the stories of the small companies that became tech giants in the United States. Apple, Google, Facebook, and most recently, Uber. I have often been asked, where is the European equivalent of the over-the-top technology platforms? I always say, Copying is for people who have no ideas themselves. We don't need to copy the valley. We should look ahead, perhaps dare to define what a post-Google or Facebook era looks like. It is not for nothing that these companies are now looking at their next step into the future. If we want to create our own Google, we are looking backward instead of forward. We should focus on our talent. I know how much talent and excellent minds we have here, in London and Munich, Amsterdam and Tallinn, and in attic rooms and schools, universities and coffee shops right across the continent. Let us use and challenge our own potential and invest in it. A lot of discussion about innovation suggests that the best role for government is just to get out of the way. But government decisions are so much more important than that. The basis of the success of Silicon Valley was the government with DARPA. Or just have a look at the successful UK government policy around fintech. It is all possible. Sometimes I think we are underestimating and undervaluing the important, if not crucial, role that governments can play. The same thing goes for the role of data. If we want the startups and tech centres of Europe to flourish, Government policies about what data to open and how to promote innovation will make a huge difference. First, governments must continue to open their data, especially the data that is in demand by entrepreneurs and social innovators. The record of data openness across Europe remains very mixed. And even those countries that pride themselves on their open data policies, such as the UK, must not become complacent. 
Just over a year ago, the UK lost public control of a vital national asset, its list of addresses. This is a basic data collection for all kinds of organisations, for big companies and new startups. Meanwhile, countries like France and the USA are recognising the value of making addresses open and are openly building data sets to make sure they are accurate and useful. The importance of opening basic information like addresses, maps, property and land records is more than just a competitive advantage for our companies, though that, of course, is something we care about. More than that, it is the difference between startups that exist and startups that do not exist. This is why the cities, countries, and even continents that build the best data infrastructure will have an enormous advantage in the 21st century economy. It is an advantage that will snowball as a few successful startups using open data become an ecosystem that helps to support newcomers and give back to the community. So just as our roads, railways, and energy networks are maintained for the public good, so too our data infrastructure should be treated that way. The second way in which governments can help create an open culture is by investing in the best ideas or stimulate the private sector to invest more in it. By creating the Open Data Challenge series, the ODI together with Nesta has shown just how powerful the right investment can be the Challenge Series was a series of competitions designed to help solve important social problems using open data by helping the winners create successful products and services that would exist long beyond the challenge. One Open Data Challenge Series winner was SkillsRoot, a data-driven service that helps young people see how well they could do on courses at local schools or colleges and weigh up their higher education and career options. Another winner was MoveMaker, which helps people living in social housing swap their properties more efficiently. A PwC report published last week estimated that the return on investment of this programme is tenfold, between five and ten pounds for every one pound invested. It is proof that the right innovation spending is not a vanity project, but a means to give people with good ideas a platform from which they can build a business and help create growth and jobs. Also, Europe can play an important role here. For open data startups that have progressed from an idea into a company, the European ODINE programme is connecting startups across Europe by forming a network of peers and mentors and providing seed capital that can make all the difference in creating a successful business. The ODI helps to select the highest potential startups across Europe to join ODINE and works with them to match them with mentors and keep them connected across a large and growing European community. We have helped to incubate startups working to improve data infrastructure, such as open corporates and transport API. Innovative companies like Provenance who are using blockchains in supply chain transparency. These may well become the household names of Generation Open. These things happen fast, and the ODI is working hard to make that happen. Ladies and gentlemen, open and data can create jobs. It can help to build businesses, increase productivity, and grow the economy. But only if the UK and Europe continue to invest in it will they see the benefits, both social and economic, that it can deliver. I would urge government ministers to continue to prioritise both the opening up of data and the funding of innovative organisations like the ODI to ensure that this powerful ecosystem we are creating is allowed to thrive. The ODI connects, equips and inspires people around the world to innovate with data. And part of this role is the work they are doing, connecting, equipping, and inspiring the community of European digital innovators as it grows. Europe will never have something quite the same as Silicon Valley, which in time might, it might also prove to be an asset if they don't manage to solve the bubble effects of that area, such as housing costs, wages, and war over talent. 
Europe is growing many centres of excellence at the same time. And with a generation that is open, which connects, shares and joins, we will make the difference in our own way. We are doing this the European way. Open data will be a key to this. It is government investment and government openness that is fueling the passions and innovations of those members of Generation Open. It will be the Generation Open who are building the European startups of the future. And as members of Generation Open, being here right now, we are making this happen. Thank you.